So this is Allison Wiedenheff. She's our biologics coordinator. She's been with us for three years now? Three years? Yeah, yeah and she has been a great addition to our team. I don't know what we would do without her. Uh, she took everything that we threw at her and made it better. So these kits are a little crazy, but with the help of Allison and the team at NBSL, we were able to figure it out um, and, and get everything that we wanted to do in this study put into the biologics. So thank you, Allison, and I'll have her take it from here. All right, guys, we're almost done for the day. Let's get through this. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of piggyback on what Natalie said. This was a huge team effort here. So yeah, here at NAMS, we've been really busy with the paperwork, stapling everything, getting everything ready for the kids. Um, then we send the paperwork to NBSL, and the next picture is NBSL's kit supplies. They uh, put all those supplies in the kits. They don't have very much workspace. We don't have very much workspace. Um, and then NBSL packages the kits into these boxes and ships them to you guys, and you distribute them to the field. In the field, you guys are busy collecting the samples, and then the labs get those samples and they do the analysis. So it's a huge team effort. Um, unfortunately, with all the people involved, there's also going to be mistakes made. And I will talk about some of those make mistakes that have already occurred. Um, and But with a lot of communication and teamwork, we'll get through those mistakes. Um, all right. Um, in your manuals, you'll find a biologic section. You might want to flip to that. It's towards the end after the questionnaires. I'm going to kind of go through it in order, I think. Um, we're also going to watch some training videos either at the end of this or tomorrow morning, and it, we're going to cover more details about um, how to collect the samples at that point, too. So today I'm going to cover the general components of the biologics, the collection and the shipping schedule, and then I'm going to go through each of these biological kits the enteric pathogen kit, the parasite kits, and the blood swab kit. So the general components of biologic slides are a little complex. Don't get overwhelmed by the details of them. Um, I just wanted to provide a good overview of the biological process. Alright, here's the enteric pathogen testing. So duplicate fecal samples will be collected from up to 25 goats. Samples will be taken from five goats in each of the following goat types, and you're going to use this priority order. This order is listed in the manual and the instructions. You don't have to write it down. Pregnant does, nursing does, pre wean kids, wean kids, and open does. If one of the goat types is not present on their operation, then you're going to collect samples from the next highest priority goat type to up to 10 goats in each type. So after you collect the samples, then you're going to ship those samples to North Carolina State University. We heard from Megan yesterday. She gets those samples and does her testing. She pro provides us re with results. And then we're going to um, make producer reports and put them in sealed envelopes and send them to the coordinators, you all. And you're going to distribute those producer reports to the field. And this usually happens within three months of collection. All right, so now the internal parasites. Um, as you can see, there are two kits here. There's the first kit is for VS, and the second kit is for the producer. The VS will be responsible for collecting up to 25 pre-wormed fecal samples. You're going to collect from goats that have not been dewormed in the last 60 days. The producer will be responsible for collecting the post-deworming fecal samples. And those same goats are going to be sampled as the pre-deworming goats um, 10 to 14 days after deworming. Those samples are going to be sent to LSU. We heard from Dr. Jim Miller earlier today. He's going to be doing the analysis on those. Um, and then he's going to provide us with the results. Again, we're going to get those, make producer reports, send those out to you guys and seal the envelopes, and then you'll distribute them to the field. All right, here's the blood testing. There are purple top tubes and red top tubes. For the purple top tubes, blood samples are gonna be collected from unrelated does and bucks greater than 15 months of age, and they'll be tested for the presence of genotypes thought to be resistant to scrapie. 
Up to 15 blood samples will be collected in purple top EVTA tubes. BS should sample from no more than five unrelated bucks and five unrelated does of one breed. If, one, if more than one breed is present on the operation, you may submit additional samples from unrelated does or bucks of other breeds for a maximum of 15 samples per farm. So these samples are going to be sent to NBSL um, in this box. And then they will provide us with the um, genetic resistance results and we'll um, send those to you within three months of the sample collection. For the red top tubes, um, you're gonna be sampling from um, up to 25 does greater than 15 months of age in red top tubes. The serum will be allocated into four sets at NBSL. Um, we're not gonna be providing results for the producers these samples, one of the aliquots is going to be tested for Q fever, and the rest of it are going to be safe for future research. All right, finally, the swab testing. We have nasal swabs that are going to be tested for mycoplasma over pneumonia. We just heard about that disease. Up to 25 does that have had blood serum samples collected can have these nasal swabs collected. Um, these samples are going to be sent to Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory. We heard from Maggie today. Um, I will talk more about the insulated mailer bag, but they're going to be shipped in an insulated mailer bag along with the vaginal swabs. And we'll be sending out producer reports to you in sealed envelopes within three months. Uh, since this disease is a little bit more sensitive to producers, you might want to um, remind them that all these results are confidential and the results will be in sealed envelopes. Uh, the vaginal swabs will, uh, let's see, will be tested for C. Bertinelli for um, the causative agent of Q fever. Up to 15 does that have blood samples collected can have the vaginal swabs collected, and these results will not be returned to the producer. Um, yeah, they're not, not conclusive results, is that? Cocktail is a weird one. Yeah. Right? So, and there's also, um, so if, if you test for cocktail and do the hand box, you test the blood sample, and then you come back negative, it doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to be shed the next day. So, okay, fine, we'll take vaginal swabs. So, if you know it's your chef, problem is there's liability. So, what does a producer do with those results? If they know their animal's chef, there's a vast majority of operations out there are shipping animals. So, why would we penalize producers that participate in the field study and, and give them those results and have that liability for them? It's not going to help them. If it was going to help them, we wouldn't turn results to them. So for now, I know it will help the food industry, but it does not help the individual producer. Yeah. Okay, question. All right, so now a little bit about the sampling timeline and the shipping schedule. Uh, earlier, we talked about how we were going to do the questionnaires between September 9th and uh, mid-December uh, and how we're expanding the collection period to April. We would really appreciate it if you could get your bulk of sampling done between September and the end of December, if possible. Um, but we, do, we, have just, we have talked to our laboratories and they're all okay with extending it to April. Um, Yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that one. Oh, the um, kit bees that the producers collect, we're gonna have a little bit extra time for them to um, go ahead and submit those samples because they will collect after they deworm and then they have to wait another 10 to 14 days. Um, so they have a little extra time. And here is a grid for the collection and chipping days. For the fecal samples, you can collect Sunday through Wednesday. F, you should ship the samples 24 hours after you collect them and you need to keep them cool. 
So if you collect your samples on Wednesday, then you're going to need to go ahead and ship on Wednesday. For the blood swab kits, the blood swab samples, you need you can collect those any day of the week. Uh, if you collect them on a non-shipping day, make sure you keep them cool. We'd appreciate it, or the lab would appreciate it if you spun those red tubes down. Um, and then only ship those samples Monday through Wednesday as well. All right, we are on to the fun part, the biologic kits. Okay. I like props, so this is good. Okay, so you can see... What's that? Yeah, a lot of us don't if you don't have them, it's okay. Yeah. They would appreciate it, but it's not a requirement. Okay. Any other questions on that? No. All right. And if you have questions along the way as I'm going through these kits, just chime in. Yeah. Back on the, yeah. the, the they get the results three months. Yeah. Um, is that three months after submission or is that three months after the end of phase two? Um, after submission, after samples are taken. I I send real time results back. Cool. So it's usually less than three months, but I like to have a little cushion. Oh, that's good. <laughs> All right, so your basic biologic kit comes in one of these boxes. And they're labeled on the outside. Uh, this one's the enteric pathogen kit. It's labeled EP. And then it also has a kit ID. This is EP kit 151. This kit ID is important. You're going to find the same kit ID on the paperwork. Um, and sometimes you have to write in the kit ID. All right, so we're going to open it up. On the top, you'll find the paperwork. The paperwork includes the instructions, the collection records, the reference cards, which are the same as the ones in the um, questionnaire, labels for the sample bags, and an air bill. Oh. For a second, I thought I didn't have an air bill. <laughs> and an air bill. One thing about the collection record, so let's see how many copies this one has. So some of our collection records, they're carbonless paper. Some of them are three-page collection records. So this has a white, a pink, yellow. Um, some of them are going to be two pages. We, On the instructions, we talk about them being three pages and how you're going to send the yellow copy one place and the pink copy you'll keep. Or, um, we changed it midway through printing to two-page collection records. So if you don't have a pink copy, it's okay. The most important thing with the collection records is that the lab gets a legible copy. So whenever you submit a sample, make sure there is a legible copy of the collection record in the kit. That's that. Okay, now we're going to open up the kit. It's like a present. <laughs> Ta-da! Um, all kids have two ice packs. This one has one ice pack. <laughs> they should have two ice packs. Um, they'll have the things you need for sampling, bags, absorbent sheets. We're going to go through each of these kits. Um, all right. We're going to go through each of these kits uh, individually, but I just wanted to kind of give you a big picture. Um, and these ice packs, uh, it might be a good idea to open up the kits when you get them and uh, or when your field gets them, whoever's going to be taking the samples, take them out and put them in the freezer uh, because you're going to need to keep the samples cool when you're collecting and then you're also going to need to ship frozen ice packs back with the samples. And it's a good idea to keep them um, frozen or um, flats because they'll bunch up and then they'll be all balls of ice. And, and it takes about 24 hours. Yeah, it takes, for yeah, it takes about an, a whole day for it to freeze. So it might be a good idea just to pop a whole bunch of ice packs in your freezer. I don't know why there's a lot of ice packs in there. All right. Fall on yourself. <laughs> 
Okay, so first we're going to talk about this enteric pathogen kit. Um, like I said, it comes with the label on the top. Enteric pathogen is labeled EP, and you guys are going to be in charge of collecting and submitting these samples. Little assistant, this is nice. Huh? Okay, I looked at that. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can pull out those bags, the three types of bags. Two of them are the same. They're smaller, and one is a little bit larger. Um, we'll talk about that soon, but the two smaller ones are going to be for duplicate sample um, collection from the same goat, and then you're going to put the duplicate samples into the larger bag there. Um, there's also lube. So we have a giant thing of lube inside. You will not run out of lube. <laughs> and, okay. Oh, and. Oh, yeah, the absorbent sheets. All right. So we do not have gloves in these kits. You guys are going to have to bring your own gloves. Right, I'm going to go over the instructions for this kit now. So the, like I said, the instructions for the sampling order are described in the manual and your instructions. The priority order, again, for the goats is pregnant does, nursing does, pre wean kids, wean kids, and open does. So you're going to sample in that order. The sampling priority order for the goats is designed by the laboratory to best achieve our biological goals. If one goat type is not present on the operation, collect extra samples from the next highest priority goat type. You're going to collect samples from the rectum when possible, although rectal retrieval might not always be possible on the smaller goats or the pre wean kids. Then you can um, collect samples fresh off the ground. You're going to collect 10 pellets per animal. Six pellets are going to go in that small, one of the smaller bags, and then four pellets are going to go in the other smaller bag. And then you're going to put those duplicate bags into the one larger bag. If it goes to short on pellets, make sure you fill up the the bag with six pellets first, and then you're going to remove any extra air from the bags, seal it uh, by rolling it over two times the roll pack bags, um, put the labels on top, you're going to make sure the labels are the duplicate labels, put them in the medium sized bag, and that way they'll stay together for the lab. Um, yeah, so those are the instructions for the collection. The yeah, I will go. They're not barcodes, but I'll go over the labeling next. All right. So each kid have should have duplicate sets of labels. I know you can't see this, but this is sample one here. This is sample one here. You're going to put, so now two bags have sample one label. You're going to write the goat name for sample one on here. And then you're going to put these two bags, when they're filled up, is that the bigger one? Inside the bigger bag here. Thank you for being this. Um, so that, that would be for one goat. <clears throat> So those sample numbers on those sample lab on those labels are going to correspond to the sample numbers on the collection form. The collection form asks for the NOMS ID, you'll fill that out, um, the kit number, which we said was on the box and on the sample labels, and then make sure you write the correct goat name or ID down their list and then answer the questions. Uh, this also has a column for the codes for antibiotics. And that's the reference card, just like the question I had. You're going to make sure you fill these guys out with a ballpoint pen. Sometimes people write with a marker and uh, it doesn't go through the uh, carbon list copies. And then we get blank forms, and that's not fun. All right, so let me go over the shipping. I'm going to kind of talk loud, I think. Let's say we have two ice packs, okay? <laughs> um, so we're going to put this frozen ice pack on the bottom. And then we're going to, this is a liner bag. It's not a garbage bag. Looks like a garbage bag. <laughs> um, say these are all of our samples. So we're going to put our samples in here. 
This little thing is an absorbent sheet. It doesn't look like much, but it, it absorbs a lot. Um, and they're required with the sample. So we're going to put the absorbent sheet in as well. We're going to tie the shirt. We need a double bagger sample, so this is double bagging. And then another ice pack goes on top, if you have one. And then we're going to put the lid on. And then, just say we have one of these sheets. So, so 25 samples, you know, there's a lot of, um, what, there's three white pages because there's 25 samples. This shows up to 10 goats here. Um, but let's just say we have 10 goats. Um, and this is all filled out. We're going to put this on top top of the cooler so that it stays nice and clean. That way, when the um, NVSL opens the kit, they, or whoever opens the kit, they just see the um, form and they know what's inside and they don't have to like open the box and be all scared. Um, then we're going to seal it up and put, it. this is the air bell. So we have these air bells pre-filled out. This is to Megan Jacob. You should double check to make sure the air bells are correct. Um, that you want these samples to go to North Carolina. And you're going to put that on top and seal it up um, and mail it Monday through Wednesday. Okay, questions on the entire kit. The good news about the entire kit is that the parasite kits are very similar. So if we got one kit down, we almost have two kits down. So we're getting there, guys. Okay, the parasite kit has a kit A and a kit B. Kit A's are the pre-deworming kits, um, and you guys are going to be taking the pre-deworming sample, and then kit B is the post-deworming kit, and the field or the um, producers are going to be taking that sample. Okay, um, one thing before I go on about the kits, you know how I talked about mistakes. The parasite kit is our fun kit with lots of mistakes. So the first one, um, these kits should arrive to you like this, um, taped together vertically. You should have a kit A with a, this ID says 277, and your kit B should also say 277, taped together. They need to come in pairs. Um, we found out that UPS was cutting the tape on our boxes, and they only have one shipping label, so then um, area offices were getting one kit, and not the two kits. So. Make sure you have two kits, and if you don't, let me know and we'll just send you another pair because we want to keep those uh, numbers the same. Okay. This is so helpful. <laughs> so let's go ahead and open this kit up. And inside, it's very similar to the entire kit. You're going to have your paperwork on top. Yeah, I'll just open this up. And then you're going to have your ice packs. You're only going to have one set of bags for this one. Two ice packs, good. <laughs> one set of bags, because you're not doing the duplicate samples, um, and lubricant. <laughs> um, the thing about this lubricant is that we are going to need you to put this lubricant into kit B, because we thought you guys have way too much lubricant. We don't need the third <laughs> set down here. So for the producer's sake, please move your parasite lubricant into their um, parasite beef kits. <laughs> we felt really weird ordering all that. And then an, uh, an extra bag for double bagging. And the liner bag. And then the liner bag. And a certain sheet. Um, again, there's no gloves in this kit, uh, so you guys just make sure you have gloves with you when you do your sampling. <laughs> Yeah. All right, I'm going to read the instructions now for the pre-deworming. You're going to sample goats that have not been dewormed in the last 60 days. We recommend deworming animals at the time of collection. When you call to make your appointment, you may want to suggest to the producer that they have the deworming ready so that you can go ahead and deworm for them. The number of samples collected is based on the number of resident goats on the operation and can be found in the instructions. Goat samples should represent the goats and kids on the operation in terms of age, sex, breed, and use. We recommend using goats that the owner believes are likely to have worms. For each goat, collect five to six fecal pellets. Collect samples from the rectum when possible. Again, um, maybe not on the young pre kids. Um, in which case, fresh off the ground samples are acceptable. 
So you might be thinking to yourself, wow, that's a lot of samples to be taken from a goat. You have six pellets in one bag, four pellets in another, and another six pellets. It is a lot of pellets from one goat. So if an operation is big enough, you might want to sample from goats that did not have the enteric um, testing done. If it's not big enough, then do your best. Do your best, <laughs> or if they really want to do both, maybe you can schedule a second visit. Right. Do one when you're doing the questionnaire, and then at your second visit, do parasites or something like that. We, we realize it's a lot of pellets, <laughs> um, but there's not too much we can do about it. But we are testing for a lot of things too, so I think it's worth it. And then if you are able to deworm at the time of the pre-deworming, um, go ahead and put the dewormer tube or uh, insert or something so we actually have the name of the dewormer in the kit that helps us out. So the, lab the labels for this guy is a little bit easier because there's just one set of labels, just like the enteric labels. Um, and you're going to make sure you match the sample number on these labels to the sample number on the collection records. Okay, speaking of collection records, um, here's our other parasite issue. The top of these collection records say Parasite pre deworming Kit A collection record. That is correct. Um, somehow, some of our enteric kits, you saw that little room we were working in, we had piles and piles of paperwork. Somehow, some of the enteric paperwork got mixed in with the Parasite paperwork. So, in general, it's just a good idea to look at your collection records, look at your paperwork, look at your air bills, make sure everything looks correct. We've caught most of the kits. There are still might be some floating around that have the incorrect kit A paperwork. Um, so check the first page. The first page would say enteric if it was wrong. But here's where it gets fun. Some of them are right on the first page and then wrong on the second or third page. <laughs> also, right? Um, so just flip through, make sure the um, row on top match and that they're they're talking about dewormers on them and that they're parasite. I actually brought extra parasite deworming, um, pre deworming kit collection records. So if you want to take them home with you, I have extra, um, just in case your you're kits might be wrong or you just want to have extra on hand. I'm just trying to cover us because <laughs> the mistake was made, but we're working together to solve it. <laughs> um, okay. So. This collection record is similar to the enteric. We ask about the anthelmintic used, and there's a reference card attached to the paperwork. And again, you're going to use the ballpoint pen to fill it out. We also talk about the FAMACHA score. This is where we are talking about the FAMACHA scoring. And I brought some FAMACHA cards with me today. Um, tomorrow we're going to go out to the farm and practice FAMACHA scoring. And we're planning on handing out uh, these FAMACHA cards and packets tomorrow after um, you practice your testing if you want to, your scoring. Um, if you don't have a FAMACHA card and you're leaving today and you won't be here tomorrow, um, come see us and we'll just give you one of these now. But we're going to send more for you to distribute to your field uh, when you get back. Uh, there's a video here, and I was planning on showing you five minutes of the video about how to do the FAMACHA scoring. Would you guys be interested in watching that now? Are you all pretty comfortable with it? What do you think? It's up to you. Want to skip it and practice tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. It's kind of boring, <laughs> so it's probably the right call, but you can go to this website. Uh, the website's in the manual. You can watch it on your own time. Um, you might want to fast forward a little bit. It's a little dry. Okay, we'll just keep going then. So shipping this is just like the enteric. Put the ice pack, frozen ice pack on the bottom. So Natalie's got her samples in another bag. We're going to put this into liner bag with an absorbent sheet. Tie it shut. Should we leave gloves for the producer? For 
couldn't be. Sorry, <laughs> you are. You're thinking ahead of time. I like that. We got you covered. We got you covered. Um, so let's say we have multiple first pages, multiple white copies in this one. Yeah. So we're going to leave the white copies. This operation apparently had 20 goats. We're going to put both copies on the top here. And find the air bill. The air bill goes to Louisiana State University. We have a winner. All right. That one's ready. Okay. Kit bees. So even though the producer is collecting these kit bees, um, we're going to have you guys go over the instructions. We're going to open up the kits for them. Go over the instructions. Be a good idea if they helped you with the kit A so they kind of knew what was going on. Um, the, they're going to do the exact same thing that you do. Um, we also want to, oh, let's go over the contents first. So inside, we're going to open it up for them. You'll see we provide the producer's gloves. So there are gloves in this kit, but there's no lubricant. So put your lubricant in, they're covered with the gloves, and everything else is the same. We only provided 25 gloves, so they need to use one hand, <laughs> not two. <laughs> um, yeah. There's a budget, guys. All right, so instructions. You're going to go over the instructions with the producer. <laughs> Just one hand, guys. Um, make sure the producer collects the samples um, 10 to 14 days after they deworm. And then you're going to make sure they um, fill out these forms correctly. And it'd be a good idea if you went ahead and filled out whatever you could. So the NOMS ID, you guys could write that in, the kit number, and maybe go ahead and write in the, the order of the kit names or IDs just so that they sample the right animals in the right orders. Shipping's the same. Uh, you should just kind of tell them to make sure they use frozen ice packs. Uh, we have had samples come in with not frozen ice packs and they're not as fun. Um, and then um, with the paperwork, uh, just make sure that you uh, put, have them put the, remind them to put the paperwork in the kit and not forget to do that. And then um, show them how to put the label on the box. Um, oops, here we are. Please, I'm gonna grab a tissue. Yes. If there's producers that want us to go back and do this, I mean, are we able to do that? Oh, I can't. No. 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 It's, it's not too much of like a distance burden. Right. I, I, I just. If like, you guys are okay with that. Yeah. yeah. Some moms are like, because yeah. if they're like, yeah. 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 especially yeah. people yeah. in my area that might just go. Nope. Yeah, yeah. If it's tough, not too much of a burden for you and you can yeah. help them out, I'm sure they would appreciate it. Sounds good. All right, so more questions on the parasite kit? Yeah. All right. All right, this kit is super fun, guys. You should be really excited about it. We have two kits in one box. They're not impressed. I don't think they got your joke. You should tell it. <laughs> they are not impressed with us. Okay. Well, it is pretty impressive. <laughs> it was a lot of work. Um, a little disclaimer, we did not need to make this kit so complicated. Uh -oh. We originally wanted to, to be a blood kit. And then um, we talked to some other laboratories and other universities, and they really wanted us to do these other tests at no cost um, through the, um, the nasal swab and the vaginal swab. And um, the results are going to help the industry. So we worked with them, and you're going to work with us, and we're going to get the results, and it's going to be great. <laughs> All right, um, so the interesting thing about this kit is that we're going to be using, this is a shipper, and then, so let's just see how tight yeah. <laughs> This is packed tight. It's impressive. Um, this is the other shipper that we're going to be using, okay? So it's two kits in one. 
All right, we're going to break this down. First, we're going to talk about the blood kit component of it. So we have vacuum cleaner needles. Um, they're 20 gauge, one inch. We have the ice pads. Oh, geez, they're all empty. Yeah. Here are the blood tubes. Kind of pretty. This nice box. This is a 10 milliliter and this is a 7 milliliter. We have vacuum cleaner needle holders. A star set marker. We think it's nicer to use star set markers on um, things that get wet. Um, so we provided those for the blood kit um, and the pan for the paperwork. I think that's it. Oops. Okay, first we'll talk about the blood collection. When you're collecting both the red top and the purple top tubes, you're going to collect the red top tubes first um, because I guess the EDTA will contaminate the red top. For the red top tubes, collect from does that are at least 15 months of age. The sampling numbers are described in the instructions. Let's see. Um, so we have like a little grid that talk about the sampling numbers based on how many goats are on the operation. Fill one of the 10 milliliter tubes uh, per doe for the red tops. For the purple top tube, sample a maximum of 15 goats that are at least 15 months of age. Does can be pregnant if the producer is comfortable with the sampling. Take the samples from no more than five unrelated bucks and five unrelated does of one breed. If more than one breed is present on the operation, you may submit an additional five samples from unrelated does or bucks from the other breeds. The, the lab only needs three milliliters of blood, so fill it halfway. Don't need to bleed them dry. I color-coded the labels for you guys. Look at that. <laughs> um, the red top tubes have red labels. And it's great if you can just put the label right over the paper on the tube. It sticks better that way. And the purple top tube has purple labels. And if you're colorblind, it also says purple top. <laughs> yeah, so I did say that if you could spin it down, it'd be great. Um, some people don't have um, such So they don't have to go to a lab no. and get it spun down? No. Okay. So, yeah, if you can't do it, it's okay. Um, just try to get those samples submitted earlier. <laughs> um, okay. And then we have this, the star set marker somewhere. It's good for labeling the tubes. But don't use this on the paperwork. We're always hesitant about putting these things in the boxes because people use them on the paperwork. And they're super expensive. They are pretty expensive. So we have instructions, and the instructions cover both the um, blood sampling and the swab sampling um, and that one set of instructions. And then in the paperwork, you're going to find two different collection records, the red top serum collection records and the purple top blood collection records. So make sure you fill them both out. You're not collecting from the same goats for these guys. Um, you, I mean, some of them will overlap, but not all of them. So make sure you fill both forms out, and then you're going to make sure you submit both plate copies with the blood work. Um, one note on the serum, you know I talked about that we changed it to two-part paper. Well, this is the one exception. This is three-part paper because it, this it's also going to be the swab and the vaginal, the nasal swab and the vaginal swab CER um, collection records, sorry. And we're going to need the other copies for the swab samples. So when you're writing this, filling this out, make sure you're going through all three copies and make sure it's legible. All right, questions about the blood. For the, for the purple top? Yeah. Yeah, so it's five unrelated does and five unrelated bucks, correct. Okay. I just wanted to make sure it's Right. Yep. For the breeds, like if you have an operation that has two different breeds and equal amounts, I mean, is there a preference on 
I don't think we have. Just um, so if they have two breeds, you'll want to do as many. I think it's five. five right? really At least five, five from that. Breed. And then you and can do another five. It's possible. whatever they want. It's their. I mean, their. It's their goats. They're gonna get the results. So but if they have two breeds, you just do ten and then. Five with the other one, yeah. So it doesn't matter which breed we're doing. No, ten no. I don't know if, if there's one breed's a... more rare than the other. Maybe do the more rare breed, mm -hmm. um, just because they they were hoping to be able to look at uh, genotype resistance by breed, That's and true. so some of the more rare breeds we may not have as much information on those. So it would be good if if one's more rare than the other. Maybe get the ten from them and five from the other. <laughs> All right, so this is our most inventive kit here. We've never done these uh, mailers, but look at this, it's so cool, right? Um, it's very, yeah, very futuristic. So this kit has um, two different sets of culture swabs, and they're both in these Ziploc bags that are labeled what they are, and they're color-coded too. Um, you have the vaginal culture swabs, which are clear top lids, and they're labeled with a blue label, I guess. And then the nasal swabs are red top and red cap. I think you should call them cap. And they have a orange label on them. So vaginal, nasal. Yeah. It's important to keep those separate. The labs will be very sad if they find no envelope pneumonia to send them. <laughs> um. That's about it in that kit. All right, so let me read the instructions to you. Um, okay, for the swabs, you're only gonna collect swab samples from goats that had red top blood tubes collected. You're using the same collection record, so make sure you're not sampling other goats. They have to have that red top blood tube collected in order to do the swab sampling. For the nasal swabs, you're gonna, oh, you can demonstrate this. So get, get, a, get a red, get a, yes, <laughs> just open it, <laughs> um, you're going <laughs> to, so this is the nasal swab here, you're going to twist the cap oh, it's hard to, to off, open it, actually. yeah, it's kind of a hard twist, yep, to remove the cap, um, you're going to remove it from the plastic tube and then you're going to insert the swab gently and deeply into each, each nostril. So you're going to use one tube for both nostrils. You're not going to do this part. Nice try, guys. Volunteers. Um, do not touch the outside of the nostril. Um, and if you do, if it's contaminated, then just go ahead and get another one. Um, then you're going to put the swab back into the plastic tube and make sure the lid is tight. And then put. Um, then we're going to label those. We'll talk about that next. Uh, yeah, we just put that up here. Um, both nostrils with one, one two, swab. one swab. Yeah. All right. So the vaginal swab is kind of the same deal, except these are the clear cap swabs. So same thing. You're gonna twist the cap, remove the swab. You're gonna insert the swab gently into the vagina, at least halfway, and then rotate 180 degrees four or five times. And then you're gonna put it back into the tube, and then it goes with the. With the okay, so now we're gonna label these guys. Is the nasal swab on here? It says sample from the same dose as the serum, so we're only doing dose? Yes, so it's the same same animal, same dose. I I get everything mixed what up. You're doing so the the purple and the red are different, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep, okay. got it. <laughs> That's why you have to fill out all these different forms. Yeah, I, know. I read the purple and saw the box. Yep. All right, so I color coded these, but it's not as clear as the purple and red tops. The orange nasal swab label goes on the nasal swab, and the blue vaginal swab label goes on the vaginal swab. You're gonna write the goat ID on these guys, make sure they're on here good. And then you're going to put these back in the Ziploc bag, the corresponding match the label, match the color label on the right bag um, for shipping. Come on, pass them yep.
Right, the paperwork. So paperwork on the swabs is easy because you just have to check yes or no if you collected a swab sample on the serum red top swab collection record. So there's a nasal swab column and a vaginal swab column. All right, shipping. So we have two different shipping methods for these two different kits. So only, only include the tubes that have blood in them. If you didn't sample from all the goats, don't include all. They don't want empty blood tubes. You can keep them. Um, yeah, so there's going to be an ice pack. Yeah. So we put the ice pack on the bottom, a frozen ice pack. So are there so other tubes? I have a bunch right now. Okay. We're going to put it in a liner bag. With an absorbent sheet. I wonder if we should rubber band the box. I mean, you have extra rubber bands. Yeah, you have rubber bands, so it might be a good idea to put a rubber band on the box. The silly question is the little rubber sheet bag sounds like a new SOP, or is this different because it's not a program to see um, it's, uh, we just like to put lots of bags around things. <laughs> like, like, you know, usually use biohazard bags for... Oh, yeah, we don't have biohazard yes, bags. It's not, it's not an a infectious disease. disease. We don't yeah. need to use. But the labs yeah. like extra bags. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, uh, do you have my back in there? Yeah. All right. So this box is extra big because we had all that other stuff in there before. So you might want to add a filler. Um, so that the blood tubes don't bounce around and shake around. Yeah. Um, and that rubber band should help too. Yeah, but I recommend putting a rubber band on those. <laughs> All right, who remembers what paperwork goes with the blood work? There is a purple collection record and a red collection record, red top collection record. Both of them. The answer is both. <laughs> um, because we have two different types of tubes in there, two different collection records. You need both collection records. Um, it can be both white copies, that's fine. On top. So the other tricky thing about this kit, this is really important, guys, right here. There are two different shipping labels with the paperwork. So the blood work needs to go to NVSL. So we have the NVSL shipping label. We've got to triple check that you're not sending the wrong thing to the wrong place. So the NVSL goes with the blood work. That one's good to go. Um, you're only going to ship those Monday through Wednesday. Well, the label would just say blood work. You know, the shipping labels do not. Um, I'm kind of leaving that up to you. We did separate. We did separate. I know. We separated them a little bit. We put the. In the paperwork. Yeah, in the paperwork, we put the um, swab samples with the red top collection record. Um, and we put the NVSL with the purple top. So they're kind of separated. Um, they don't always look the same. I don't know. It's kind of up to you guys. I know it's going to be tricky. Um, yeah, so the labs also wanted us to put like, yes, NOMS goat study. So we could have put NOMS goat study um, blood, but we didn't. So, yes. And so it turns out Airbills take a really long time to get. So we ordered them well in advance and then we reordered them and reordered them. So. We were just happy to get them, honestly. <laughs> and I know there's going to be mistakes made in the field. We'll forgive your mistakes. You're going to forgive our mistakes. We'll get the things where they need to go. That is well. Um, so when I dropped a box off at FedEx, the guy was kind of nosy and asked about it. And so having it on the label is maybe a little questionable as well because they get kind of, I don't know, he got kind of feisty with me. Yeah, you so might not want to say blood. He was like, well, I guess I'll ship it for you. And I'm yeah. like, You've been shipping this stuff for us for years. Right, it's very so, true. I don't know. Yeah, don't tell them. What so that's why we say like BS on everything. No, nothing's infectious. Um, so 
Yeah. We've never done it. We did when we collected scabs. Yes, because oh, okay. they are potentially force infected. Yeah, as long as it's not considered an infectious material. Don't go out of your way telling them what you're supposed yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah. But I will. Yeah. But, but I mean, if they ask, like, just say, Studying oh, it's just going to the lab. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we looked it up and it said as long as it wasn't infectious, it was okay. Um, and it's yes. what we've done. So until, our, until we get slapped, you know, we're going to keep going. So there's five extra people to sample the mask. All right. Okay. But very few operations are going to be sampling out this time. Okay, so this is the bag, the shipping bag, the shipping mailer that we're using for the swabs. So here are the swab samples that you collected. We're gonna put yeah, we're gonna put all that stuff in the bag. Okay. Um, so we're gonna put you should I think there are three ice packs in this kit, so we're gonna put two ice packs with the swab samples. Because I don't know if this um, insulated mailer is as great as I think it's gonna be. <laughs> So it's an experiment. Um, so we're going to put this in. Absorbent sheet. We have two. Yeah, because there's two samples. Yeah, we'll do two. Um, swabs. We have a drawing of that too. Maybe they can use it for garbage. <laughs> it might be a garbage bag. <laughs> you might have to get all the air out. Oh, did you like that? Very nice today. Yeah. Okay, that's really nice. Hey, Okay, now for this one, we're going to include the other copies of the swab, or of the, um, not the purple one, the red top collection record where it says nasal swab and vaginal swab. It's a reminder. These are your nasal swab, vaginal swab samples. Um, go ahead and include both of those copies because the, um, the swabs are going to get shipped from one lab. The vaginal swabs are going to go to a different lab. But we're going to put them all together to start with. So took those. So you'll send them all to KSBDL. It's all, yeah, it's all going to one you lab. go to one you. place. KSBDL will then forward them. The, um, so they're, they're in a bag. And they're dry. They're dry swabs. Oh, okay, okay. There's yeah. no, there's, so there's no culture media in them. That's yeah, the, the nice dry swabs. About both of these, so. Oh, I put the ice pack, I put the ice pack in the liner bag, yeah. sorry. Okay. So everything. Put everything in the liner bag here. I always put paper in the anyway. Yeah. It's if you not want, a bad practice. If you want to, you can totally put the. It looks like there um, might there's be an another bag. Um, yeah. Again, this is the first time using these insulated bags. This is like, how are we going to make this work? So hopefully, you might want to add another piece of tape on there. And then, yeah, seal it up. And then seal it up. Okay, so it's 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 here is your um, Kansas State air bill. Again, double check that you have Kansas State. For the nasal swabs, we really should have written the nasal All right, any questions on the swabs? I think this is a new biologic that we haven't taken before, so, and the, the shipping method's definitely different, uh, so. We have questions, I don't know. <laughs> is it gonna work? Um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. One of our 8,000 vegetarians accepts the schedule. So I'm only going to take 25 samples. So like, do you want me to go into like, take samples out of one road out of 25 different chins? Do you want certain ones, like certain stages of lactation? Do you want girls that look purebred or girls that look like so the Do you have a way to like narrow So the enteric pathogen, we have, you know, priority order. So in that one, we do have a priority order listed in the instructions where we want certain samples taken from certain goats. Um, with the parasite kits, we want the most wormy goats um, because we want worms. Um, so in your dairy, that might be like the high lactating. And then for the blood samples, um, other uh, or for the. Uh, yeah, blood samples. So we have the scraping. recommendations for the scraping. Yeah, the unique breeds. 
And then, yeah. You, you want the ones that appear red or the ones that look brown? Well, you have to do um, five of the same. What do they say about the crossbreed? They're interested in that, We right? can mark, the, yeah, so an option is crossbred, but I think that the more valuable information would probably be from the purebred. So if they have those available, I would take from those. Unless, you know, a producer really wants to know specific information on one of those goats, then it's really up to them, and you can you can get that scrapey genotype resistance information for them. With the red top tubes, we want that to be random mm -hmm. does. So in that case, um, it may make sense to take from different groups, kind of across age classes of that 15 months and older. But we don't want you there all day. Yes. Yeah. So try to be as efficient as possible. I know it's a lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> Do your best. <laughs> Yeah, try to make it a random sample when possible for the red top tubes. So because we have no clue what that what research is going to be done on those in the future. We can we can guess, but you guys have shipped those okay so far? We've had they shipped to us. Um, like yeah, and that we had we practiced a little bit. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just curious. That's we practiced a little bit, and it was okay. So we lose a bag and that that's like. I would put some extra tape on it. <laughs> But um, our experiments worked okay, so. And they shipped them with the swabs in them. Yeah. It yep. seemed to go fine. Yep. Um, the, the inquiry, the survey says that we continue on if they have questions, but on the biologics, there's nothing that says what they have. They could do the parasites still. Have it. So no blood no blood no. testing. Um, scrapey, just bugs. That's just bugs. Yeah. 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 Okay. Just the parasite. Yeah. Yep. Um, so one, uh, one set of big ship kit, kit shipments went out or is continuing to go out this month. Um, and that's going to either area offices or to the coordinators, um, whatever you guys specified. So you're gonna get one set soon, and then we're sending another big batch of kits um, right as the city starts uh, for you guys to distribute. And then if you want more, um, email Abby. And um, since the study is being extended, I kind of have a feeling that you're gonna need more uh, entire kits later on. So just let us know about that. Um, feel free to email me with your questions. Uh, you can email me or call my cell, I'm not often in the office, so it's so, probably the best. Lucky you. So we're, we're putting the pink and the yellow with the squad. Yes. We're going to split them. And then the white one's going to go with the red top. So we're not going to have any take home. That's the only one. So a lot of these, a lot of these you might not have take home. So if we, when we cut down from the three part paper to the two part paper, we kind of took away your take home. Um, but so, but we're not having you guys submit CERs to us anymore. Um, in the in, or in the collection records, previously we had coordinators um, ship us the collection records like periodically throughout the study. We're having the labs do that now, so you guys don't have to do that. So we've taken that part of the paperwork out of your job because we thought it was just too much. Um, so the labs get the paperwork, and the labs are going to provide me a copy, a copy of the paperwork to me. So you don't have to worry about it. It kind of helps you guys out, um, and it reduces the amount of paperwork that's floating around. So. Yeah. Does anybody have any? I have a yeah. Um, as far as like tracking it, because FedEx has lost my biologic samples oh, yeah. before, um, so if we track it and they lose it somehow, um, do we? Have to start all over. I think so. <laughs> that, is, oh, yeah. that is a sad occurrence. Um, it's so, a can we like take a picture of the label so we can track it? To just... So, when you get them the airbill, they should hand you a tracking slip. Okay. Um, and you can use that to track it. And oh, for okay, some okay. reason, it doesn't show up in the lab or it gets lost. They're one um, day, so we'll know right away. Right. right. We'll know. And then we can work to get you another kit if you want to go out and resample with the producer. Um, that, so, I just want to make a note for FedEx. It's always good the day you you check or the day that you're gonna ship check the weather in Memphis <laughs> because 
things will just get lost in the abyss in Memphis if they're having weather problems and they put everything in a warehouse. So it might be a good idea to just check that before you ship samples. Yes. I also think it's better than yesterday, but you mentioned a while ago, just don't tell the FedEx and clerk a lot about what yeah. you want. Yeah. Whenever you put that UN 3373 sticker on there, they can use that be a big thing, and they'd be like, oh, what's that? Yeah, so we don't write blood on there. And I actually yeah. had to go back, they called me and had to go back to the, to the you know, in Bowling Green, which is not close to me, all the way back across the country to get a sample and take it to, a, to the main hub. And uh, that's not a very convenient thing. No. It's grandma's cookies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sending something to the university. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we have training videos, but I think. I think it's five o'clock and we should be done. Um, but tomorrow morning, maybe we could watch a couple of these training videos that Jason helped make for us. Um, and that will kind of get us going um, for our field collection tomorrow. Does that sound good? And uh, I just want to thank you up front for all your work that you guys are going to be doing in your training, your field staff. You guys might be going out to the field. We know it's a ton of work. So thank you so much.